welcome everybody to Fireside Chats, uh, part of Pure Fire Creatives. I am here with Joan Locke. Um, she is part of the Visionary Women Exhibit that's up in Columbia Art Center. Uh, and welcome, Joan. Hi. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. So what we're going to do is um, I just want to give you an opportunity to tell us who you are and what you do. Hi, uh, my name is John Locke. I live in Colombia. And as um, uh, our host has said that, you know, like I'm part of the Visionary Women Exhibitions. I've been a resident of Maryland, uh, Howard County for a long time. And um, what I do, I do paintings in Sumie, which is water and ink on rice paper. And, um, uh, you know, in the art world, it's actually more like watercolor. However, the equipment and the um, supplies that we use are slightly different. Our paper are very thin, we call it rice paper. And then the brushes, they are mainly round brushes, but then uh, a majority of them are natural hair. And as a matter of fact, I bought uh, some samples oh, of the brushes great. that I use. So mm -hmm. they, are, um, they are usually round. And then some of them are harder hairs, some uh -huh. of them are harder hair, but then, you know, some of them, if you can see this one, this one uh -huh. is a combination of hard and soft hair together. So um, all, most of them are round. And um, when I do the painting, what I do is I do it on very thin paper and I have a sample. I have um, a sample which you can see the light passing through and you can see my hair. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. this, this is how thin the paper is. And uh, the good thing about the using very thin paper and the round brushes is that the, uh, when the brushes uh, heat the water and ink uh, on the paper, the, absorb the absorbency is really immediate. And therefore, not only does the paper uh, show the colors, it also show the brushwork. And therefore, um, a lot of people call this brush painting because the brushwork really shows. And as a matter of fact, let me just show you a sample of um, what the brushwork may be like. Mm -hmm. so, so these are two little bunnies eating a carrot. But oh, then, lift it up just a little bit. Lift it up just, yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, these are, you know, like uh, uh, two bunnies eating a carrot and you can mm -hmm. see the brushwork from here, go all the way up and then come down and you can see the strokes. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. So that's the beauty of um, this kind of painting. Beautiful. So um, is the um, sunflower painting behind you yours? Yes, yes, it's mine. It's, uh, rice paper is always handmade. Um, of course, you know, like uh, with technology, now we also have rice paper that are machine made. But then, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of time, the rice paper when they are made in the, um, in the you know, like uh, the, it's not even factory, it's the artisan shops. Um, they come really big pieces. And then um, uh, a few years back when I was uh, visiting the Smithsonian, mm -hmm. I was doing the Cherry Blossom Festival. And then, um, uh, you know, like they have invited um, some really great paintings to be exhibited outside of Japan. And um, they are in a full sheet of rice paper, which is 56 inches by 27 inches. So wow. after that, I decided that maybe I want to try not cutting my paper and doing big pieces. So uh, the one behind me uh, are um, sunflowers that I did uh, inspired by that particular exhibition. And mm -hmm. um, we have two chickadees on the side, but then they are like um, real life size rice um, sunflowers, which is, you know, like they do grow this big. And um, it's a full sheet of rice paper that um, I, I really like that. I think it's really happy and uh, especially in times that we are staying home, uh, to mm -hmm. see, like brilliant sunflower, it, it makes people happy. Yes, yes. Now, um, did I understand correctly that you actually have uh, books on, on how to do it as well? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, um, I have a really popular book called Chinese Brush Painting Flowers. Mm -hmm. and book was published in English and written in English and it includes how to paint flowers uh, in the, the brushwork that I did and mm -hmm. um, uh, the interesting thing is uh, after I wrote it in English uh, the publisher was, was able to 
uh, marketed in Europe, and therefore Ooh. the book is in five different languages right now. Oh, uh, wow. Dutch, is Italian, French, and also Spanish. Wow, and wonderful. I made it a uh, mission to try to collect all the copies, and I have <laughs> to say that I succeeded. Oh, um, good. <laughs> I went to Italy and got me a copy in Italian. Uh -huh. I was visiting Spain on my uh, vacation, and I collected one in Spanish. A colleague visited Paris last year and collected one in French. Uh -huh. And then I was thinking, who, how do I get a Dutch copy? And I was telling my student, then my student said, hey, Joe, you know, like, um, I'm visiting my brother in Holland. I'll pick one up for you. So oh, nice. actually, just, just this spring, I collected um, all the different languages. and. Um, I'm I'm really happy about it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, that how exciting is that? That's wonderful. Yeah, it's a it's it's a very popular book, and um, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, I flow in like how to paint a bird, and mm -hmm. um, have you realized that this is an Oreo because I live uh in Maryland. <laughs> this be like, like your, your your Maryland your Maryland background is showing, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you, um, I think you had something um, where you showed like the steps, you're working on a bird book, is that right? How to paint birds? Yeah, yeah. after I finished the flower book, a lot of my students said that, Joan, can you also teach us how to paint birds? Then I said, Yo, let me see if I have time to do that. And therefore, um, with, with uh, uh, work and uh, a lot of competing priorities, it, I would mm -hmm. take a little bit of time to finish it. But uh, I have started working on a bird book, and um, this is something that um, that I'm working on. For example, mm -hmm. this is a cardinal, and mm -hmm. I have to say that in Maryland, we see them in our backyard all the time as well. And the bird mm -hmm. basically is black, so uh, the way I did it is, instead of doing it very meticulously, I actually used brushwork to represent, for example, this is like one stroke going up, mm -hmm. And then you see that the, the body come down and mm -hmm. um, the, the speed of the brush would have different lines and holes in it. We call it flying white. Mm -hmm. and, and so the brush work show, and this would be the sample of how it may look like when it is done. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So oh, I will have very a cool. book soon, but um, um, I have to take some time on it because uh, uh, you know, like birds is a lot more difficult to paint than flowers. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. They, they, people will know when they get, they're off. <laughs> yes, yes. Actually, um, flowers too, you know, you never yeah. know, you know, there are a lot of finers and really um, experienced gardeners that are coming to uh, see your artwork. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I, I try to kind of when I'm teaching, so I teach like uh, acrylics and watercolor and things like that. And, and I, but I, I, I try to explain that um, in art, it's not like math in the sense of like, you don't have to sh show your long hand, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yes. and so um, I'm like, if you, you know, if you know what a lemon looks like, you can paint it from your imagination, because nobody's gonna say, show me that lemon do you know <laughs> show me the lemon that you painted it's off you know and so i think that that they have a little bit flowers have a little bit more flexibility i think than than birds because yes, people a, of, a lot of times when we think paint flowers and bird um at least for myself i mm -hmm. uh i mean like when i paint flowers it's not just i'm trying to capture the beauty when they're in bloom but in a way just like the the reason why I put the sunflower uh, up today, because sunflower not only is the beauty of the sunflower, but then it represents sunshine, it represents happiness, and mm -hmm. and you know, you know, certain emotions that people relate to. And mm -hmm. then, for example, you know, like in the last month, and um, uh, you know, like Washington DC has a lot of cherry blossoms, and then you know, cherry blossoms um, to a lot of people represent the return of Spain, uh, of uh, Spain, spring. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, the uh, Howard County, because we are a little bit north of DC, so therefore our cherry blossom actually haven't bloomed yet, but then they will bloom in the middle of April. So I'm sure that people who are coming to Columbia, uh, living in Howard County and the rest of Maryland, 
they will continue mm -hmm. to see different cherry blossom as well. So mm -hmm. um, when we plant the flowers, not just capturing the beauty, but the kind of emotion that we have with them, and mm -hmm. uh, it not not have have to be a happiness. Sometimes it could be sadness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could be mystery. And the same thing with birds. Mm -hmm. I mean, birds. I mean, anything that has a face uh, would mm -hmm. be a lot easier to accumulate emotions. And birds do have face as well. Yeah, Although, yeah. May not you may not think about it that way, but when you are really getting into painting it, I mean, the the ways their eye, the ways their their face look, you know, like. Mm -hmm does communicate what you want to tell the viewer. Yeah, well, I used to do um, pet portraits mm -hmm. and um, and I would literally talk to the, the portraits and go, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And and I would like, and then I'd go, oh, there you are. Like, because like, you would be like, that's not quite it, not quite it, not quite it. And then suddenly you're like, oh, oh, that's it, you know? And so I totally agree. I think that each little, um, creature has its own little, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you want to call it like vibe of life or whatever, but, but they, they do have their little personalities, you know? Yeah, I do think so too. Sometimes um, when we put up an artwork, especially uh, because I mean, especially, you know, the media that I do is watercolor. And um, so therefore you really don't want to overwork it. And because of that, um, there are times that, you know, you have to stop. And I always tell my student, you know, this is time to get a cup of tea. Right. <laughs> you know, walk well, away and then come back to it. And it may tell you what is needed. Yeah. If you just stare at it, it, I mean, you may not see it. But then when you walk away and then come back to it, then maybe something is kind of like screaming and say, hey, put, put, put another flower here. Or, you know, you need a bird here. Yeah. Well, and, that's, I, and I do think that's one of the hardest things to um, like uh, teach a beginning artist is to step away from it because um, like I've, I've started, I was just before everything shut down, I was like, ah, you know, I think I'm going to start putting like a timer in my classroom and so that it'll be like, okay, now's the time you step away from your painting. You know, look at everybody else because it is, it's so valuable, but people just forget to do it because they're just so focused on the task at hand, but yes. it, it absolutely is really valuable. Mm -hmm. um, I just have to ask you, have you been to McKee Beshers, the big sunflower thing out in Maryland, or is it Maryland? McKee Beshers, the big sunflower field? Mm, I don't think so, but then, you know, one of these days, I probably will when we are... I will, I'll, I'll send you the info, because people, yes. like, they watch, it's like a bloom watch. Do you know what I mean? Like, you'll, they'll start reporting on, like, Facebook and everything, like, oh, the field, they're, they're in bloom. And it's, and it's great, because there are all these massively tall sunflowers, and then it's like, um, like, the people become little groundhogs. You'll see them pop up above, and then, you know, <laughs> it's wonderful. Oh. I was in a balloon festival last year, and I believe that it was in a wine yard. And mm -hmm. uh, next to the wine yard, um, there are sunflower fields. Yeah. But then oh, I they're beautiful. It was at the end of summer, so uh, some of them has already been harvested. But then I can imagine when they're in full bloom, it must be outrageously gorgeous. Oh my, oh my gosh, it is, it is. I mean, you would be hard pressed to be unhappy in, in a field like that. Like, a, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, let us know where can we find you. Oh, uh, uh, it's very simple. I mean, my name is John Lock, so therefore, you know, like you can see me in JohnLock.com, uh, which is my website, and you can see my schedule. But of course, you know, like a lot of those classes has been postponed. But then mm -hmm. uh, I'm also on Facebook and also on Instagram, John Lock Art, and. Um, Email me, you know, like communicate, and uh, I may, you know, come to your interview again. Thank oh, you excellent. for inviting me this time. Thank you so much. This has been delightful. My pleasure. Thank you.